Kicking off at number 5, the Kaz 2, which perhaps is one of the most terrifying modern instances of the term ghost ship and one of the most profoundly tragic unsolved mysteries of the deep blue sea. The Kaz 2, which was publicly dubbed the ghost yacht, was a 9.8 meter catamaran which was found drifting listlessly 88 nautical miles off the northeastern coast of Australia on the 20th of April 2007. The three men aboard, who were all residents of Perth in Western Australia, were all incredibly experienced sailors. There were 56 year old Derek Batten, and brothers Peter Tunstead and James Tunstead, who were 69 and 63 respectively. Their whereabouts still remains a mystery to this day, and the fate of these three men perhaps may never be known. What made it even stranger is that when the Kaz 2 was eventually found by the Coast Guard, there were no signs of distress, no signs of boat damage, or even a struggle between the three men. It was as if they just vanished out of thin air. Coffee cups were left out, and all the life jackets on board remained stowed away, indicating that the trio never felt at risk. In an even more curious turn of events, rescue teams discovered video footage of the three men on a handheld camera, seemingly hours before they disappeared. It showed them fishing, relaxing in the sun with the motor off, and offered no clues as to how these three experienced sailors disappeared at sea. Although an inquiry was later drawn, no definitive conclusions were ever reached, and only theories remain about the ultimate fate of the Kaz 2. Coming in at number 4, we have the Caliucci, a Chilean ship sailing around an island known for its terrible storms. Shining white sides, three masts with five sails, blood red. The ship sails independent of any human input. Sure, there's a ghost crew, but the Caliucci is known for being sentient. The ship has a mind of its own. It'll glide along the water at incredible speeds and is able to submerge and continue navigating underwater, similar to the famous Flying Dutchman. When it passes, folks say you can hear the crew cackling for a brief moment. It's a ship known for the merriment of its ghostly crew. They throw parties often and hop around on one leg. The folks on board often only have one leg because the other is folded behind their back, similar to another Chilean mythological entity. To top off their strange looks and mannerisms, some crew members have backwards faces, terrifying all who lay eyes upon them. Some say the Caliucci is manned by sailors both dead and alive, dragged from the depths and snagged off passing ships. Another legend says that the ship is piloted by the souls of the drowned, brought aboard by water spirits and granted the gift of life in exchange for their servitude. Not so sure that's a good deal, you know, life eternal, but you'll always be on a stinky ship. Maybe the parties are just that sick. Merchants who trade with Caliucci supposedly become very wealthy afterwards, and anyone who has laid eyes upon it wears a crooked smile forever. Again, interesting deal. Lots of money, crooked smile. I guess you could afford a dentist and some plastic surgery at that point. Next up at number 3, the Mary Celeste, which in fact may very well be the world's most infamous ghost ship as well as one of the longest enduring mysteries of the seven seas. Built in Spencer's Island, Nova Scotia in 1861 and launched under the new name of the Mary Celeste in 1868, this merchant brigantine sailed uneventfully across the Atlantic for years as a seaworthy efficient vessel. It wasn't until her fateful voyage in 1872 where the true ghostly legend began. Which has since gathered theories that vary from submarine earthquakes, water spouts, an attack by a giant squid, and even paranormal intervention. No one will truly know the ultimate fate of the Mary Celeste, with every single soul on board never being seen or heard from again, which is a terrifying thought in itself, isn't it? The Mary Celeste was discovered adrift and deserted just off the coast of the Azores Islands on December 5th, 1872. It was a Canadian vessel, the De Gratia, which found her in a dishevelled but seaworthy condition, under partial sail and with one life. Boat missing. The last entry in the ship's log was dated 10 days earlier, which detailed the vessel's last known location before these mysterious, infamous events unfolded. On board was the ship's captain, Benjamin S. Briggs, his wife, Sarah, and their two year old daughter, Sophia, and eight seasoned crew members, all veterans of the sea. It poses the question what dire threat did the Mary Celeste face that caused a highly experienced captain to abandon his ship? Nothing was stolen, all of the crew's possessions and cargo were exactly as they'd left them, but in all likelihood, we may never know. To the Princess Augusta. And on the topic of ghostly phenomenon, this particular apparition is perhaps one of the most well documented ghost ships of the 18th century, although the actual history behind it is shrouded in intrigue. Although the folklore account of this particular vessel is based upon the historical wreck of the Princess Augusta, a ship that sailed out of Rotterdam in August 1738 under the command of Captain George Long, in more modern records, it is commonly referred to as the Palatine, where the Palatine Light, the apparition in 
question famously gets its name. And the reason for that is down to the nature of the ship. Alongside 14 of his crew, Captain Long's directive was to transport 240 German immigrants from the Palatinate region of the Rhineland to build a new life for themselves in Philadelphia. However, we know that this is the tale of a ghost ship, and from the offset, their vessel was afflicted with some terribly tragic luck. Not long after passing through the Atlantic, the Princess Augusta's water supply was contaminated, causing a fever and flux to spread through the ship, killing 200 of its passengers, half the crew, and the captain himself. The ship's first mate, Andrew Brooke, quickly took command as the survivors leapt out of the frying pan and into the fire, getting hit by severe storms that pushed the ship far off course to the north. They then endured three months of extreme weather and dwindling supplies, when eventually they emerged shipwrecked in Block Island, not far from Rhode Island. Here the tale splits, but one thing is certain, Andrew Brooke, the first mate and commanding captain, took what remained of his crew and rowed ashore, without once looking back at the cursed ship. It is said that some of the passengers survived, aided by the Block Islanders, but little to nothing is known about those that survived the entire voyage. As the legend goes, the Princess Augusta was set alight from the coast in the dead of night, pushed out to sea to burn and then disappear. At night, they say that if you listen closely, you can hear the screams of those that didn't make it back to shore. And finally, our number one spot, the Orang Medan. And where do we even begin with the bizarre, perplexing legend of the Orang Medan? Perhaps the most terrifyingly unexplainable instances of a ghostly shipwreck in history. But, well, the leading physical theory of the Orang Medan may be even more horrifying than it first appears. As the legend goes, at some time in June 1947, an American vessel by the name of the Silver Star picked up several distress calls from a nearby Dutch merchant ship, the Orang Medan. A radio operator aboard the troubled vessel sent a message in Morse code. In rush, confused dots and dashes, it read, We float. All officers, including the captain, dead in chart room and on the bridge. Probably whole of crew dead. And then a few moments later, after even more confused dots and frantic dashes, two words came through very clearly. I die. Then silence. Nothing more was heard of them. But well, when the Silver Star eventually located and boarded the apparently undamaged and otherwise seaworthy Orang Medan, what they found absolutely horrified them. Every single person aboard was found dead, sprawled on their backs, frozen in fear with their mouths gaping open and their eyes staring straight ahead. There were no survivors, but even more terrifying, apparently no signs of injury or foul play. Just as the Silver Star crew was preparing to tow the ship to a nearby port, a fire broke out in the Orang Medan, which shortly exploded before finally sinking into the depths. Since this horrifying incident, theories have ranged from the vessel carrying a highly dangerous chemical nerve agent, to an entanglement with the CIA after a result of a secret experiment, to an unprovoked alien assault. But if you haven't already sensed a theme with this particular list, it seems that we may never know. Kicking off at number 5, the SS Beichimo. Now, although many tales of ghost ships and their legend are mired in murky mystery and spotty historical records, this one is perhaps one of the most well documented cases of a ghost ship in nautical history. Built in Sweden in the year 1914, the SS Beichimo was used as a trading vessel for routes between Hamburg and Sweden in and throughout the First World War. After the war, though, it was shipped over to Canada, where it was employed by the Hudson's Bay Company, carrying cargo throughout the Arctic region. There, on October 1st, 1931, during a routine voyage, a devastating storm blew in, and the Beichimo was trapped in pack ice just off the coast of Alaska. The crew quickly abandoned ship, traveling over the ice to the nearest town of Barrow, Alaska, where they took shelter. Several days later, after the storm had subsided, the crew returned to retrieve their precious cargo, only to find that the SS Beichimo had disappeared. Her captain decided that she must have broken up during the storm and sunk, but a few days later, an Inuit seal hunter told the captain that he had spotted the Beishimo nearly 50 miles away from their initial position. As the story goes, the Beishimo didn't sink at all, and for several decades after her abandonment, she sailed the Arctic coast completely unmanned. In fact, the SS Beishimo was seen on numerous occasions throughout the following century, and several crews even managed to board her. In fact, the last recorded sighting was by a group of Inuit in 1969, a staggering 38 years after she was abandoned. Her ultimate fate? No one knows, but it it's safe to say that somewhere out there in the frozen north, the SS Beishimo is still sailing. Number four, the SS Valencia. Side note, if you like what we do here, 
make sure you always Hulk smash that like button or throw a comment down below. It really helps the channel out. Let us know what other ghost ships you know of and I'll chuck them out for a part two or maybe even a part three. Speaking of more ghost ships, the SS Valencia is one of the creepier ship stories. Pulling up and finding a completely abandoned ship is scary enough. Those are people's lives lost. It's scary stuff. The SS Valencia was an American iron hauled passenger steamer built for service in 1882 by William Cramp and Sons. It did many things. In 1897, the Valencia was attacked by a Spanish cruiser, Reina Mercedes, just off the Guantanamo. Bay in Cuba. They tried to sink her, but nope, she was built strong and she survived. A year later, she became a passenger liner for the US West Coast where she served in the Spanish American War as a troop ship during the conflict. Eventually, after her service, the Valencia was wrecked off of Cape Beale, the west coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia on January 22nd, 1906, as her sinking unfortunately took 100 passengers with her. Some classify the wreck of the Valencia as the worst maritime disaster in quote, the graveyard of the Pacific, which is a famously known treacherous area off the southwest coast of Vancouver Island. That's a horrible nickname for a shallow area also, right? Like the graveyard? That's horrible. Six months after the sinking, a local fisherman and his wife reported seeing a lifeboat with eight skeletons in a nearby sea cave at the shoreline of Pachena Bay. The cave was reported to be around 200 feet deep. There was no definite explanation for the lifeboat's presence in the cave, but due to the dangerous seas outside the cave's mouth, the lifeboat along with its human remains couldn't be recovered. Local fishermen similarly report lifeboats being rowed by skeletons of the Valencia's victims just offshore as well. Most famous sighting? was a rescue ship named the Topeka. Some observers on board who were survivors of the just sunken Valencia claimed while sailing home with the survivors, a ship approached from the fog and the ship passing was the just sank Valencia. The crew on board apparently now all skeletons. Yo, I'm getting the curse of the black pearl vibes right now, are you? Like that's scary, scary. Coming in at number three, the SS Valencia. Now this one's a little bit more interesting to say the least because it's a verified fact that the wreckage of the SS Valencia can still be seen to this day, scattered along the beach and rocky shoreline of Vancouver Island's West Coast Trail. After the ship struck a reef during a storm in 1906, the wreckage of the SS Valencia was considered to be the worst maritime disaster along the western North American coast, otherwise known as the Graveyard of the Pacific. The Valencia was a small ship, a passenger steamer that had a long history of carrying both passengers, cargo, and troops. But at the time of her ruin, she was operating as a tour boat, often running routes from San Francisco and up to Seattle. During the wreckage, tragically, 136 souls were lost with rescue efforts unable to access the Valencia in the ravaging storm. But our ghostly tale lies with those that tried to escape. You see, as the legend goes, in panic, the crew launched all of the Valencia's lifeboats, going against the captain's orders, all of which went horribly wrong. Three flipped on descent, dozens more capsized after reaching the water, and the last one disappeared out into the waves. Since the disaster of the SS Valencia, countless sailors and fishermen have reported sightings of these lifeboats listlessly floating upon the water during particularly calm days at sea. As some of the tales go, these lifeboats are still filled with the skeletal remains of the lost souls of the SS Valencia. Coming in at number two, we have Baron Falkenberg. A tale of lovers scorned, brothers bashed, and dice rolled. This pirate haunts Germany's North Sea and has been for over 600 years. Baron Falkenberg was a relatively wealthy member of high society, planning to propose to the village's most beautiful maiden. Then his long lost brother returned with newly found riches and proposed to her first. At the wedding, the Baron became so upset with his brother that he clubbed him over the head with a bottle of champagne. Classy. Naturally, the brother dropped dead. Seeing this, his bride ran away, claiming that she'd rather die than be with the Baron. Ouch. So the Baron did what any rational fratricidal maniac would do, and stabbed her in the heart. How romantic. Then he ran away to the beach, where he was accosted by a shady man on a boat. This mysterious figure invited him to the ship where he came from, which was anchored offshore a little ways out. The Baron accepted and rode his way to the Great Grey Behemoth. Since entering, nobody has seen him disembark and he's been at sea for centuries. The ship he boarded always seems to be heading due north, 
and flickers of blue flame. Some passers by claim to have seen the Baron himself playing dice with the devil in order to take back control of his soul. Unfortunately, it appears to be very difficult to win a game of chance against the devil. An additional caveat that can be added is that there are those who will claim that the story of the Baron is also connected to a Norse ghost story. The story tells the tale of a Viking sea captain who stole a magic ring from the gods. As punishment for his crimes, he was turned into a living skeleton covered in fire, condemned to spend the rest of eternity affixed to the mast of a ghostly longship. Whether the two stories are about the same ship, it's hard to say. However, I think we can all agree that a flaming skeleton pirate is pretty badass. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the seabird. And this story is the literal definition of a ghost ship and one of the most saltiest sea yarns that I've heard spun in a while. Although this one has a few more twists and turns that you may not have first seen coming. As the legend goes, in the year 1750, a vessel named the seabird was idling off the coast of Newport Harbour in Rhode Island and had quickly attracted quite a crowd on the shore due to its elaborate craftsmanship. Soon enough though, the crowd of onlookers noticed that there was something strange about the seabird. There was no one manning the ship, not a a soul in sight. As the legend goes, several moments later, the ship, as if by a supernatural wind, perfectly sailed itself through the rough breakers of the beach, gently landing on the nearby Easton's Beach. There, a few brave souls boarded the vessel, only to find the seabird completely deserted, save for a boiling kettle on the stove, and strangely enough, breakfast already prepared at the table. Now, some accounts state that a group of fishermen had passed the seabird a few hours before and had even spoken to the captain themselves. Where had the crew? gone, what had happened in the few hours that had passed since their last sighting. The truth of it is that no one may ever know, and such is the nature of ghostly tales from the sea. But well, this is where things get a little stranger still, and take this final caveat with a pinch of sea salt. But as the legend goes, decades later, an old sailor reported to a New England journalist his deepest, darkest secret. In a fit of rage, he had murdered his entire crew just before making port, throwing their bodies into the ocean. And the name of that ship? Well. The Seabird, of course. Kicking off at number five, the Caliuche. And for this first foray into these particular ghost ships that haunt the sea, we're going to be heading over to the mythologies of Chile and the many legends that have been built around its coastal landscape. One of those, according to Chilean legend, is that of the Caliuche, a large ghost ship that sails the seas of Chiloe, a small island just off the coast, where it only ever appears at night. The ship itself is said to appear as beautiful, cast in a bright white light, an enormous vessel with three and five sails each. It is said that when the Caliuche appears, it is always at night and always full of lights with the sounds of a great party and a feast on board. Quickly though, it disappears, plunging back beneath the murky depths. Interestingly enough though, although this vessel is said to be similar to the Flying Dutchman, there is a boatload of mythology relating to this particular legend. One of these versions claims that the vessel is crewed by the drowned, souls lost at sea who are brought to the ship by three mythological figures in Chilean legend. Two sisters, one of them the Serena Chilota, a type of mermaid, and the other the Pincoya, a type of water spirit said to protect the Chilean coast. And then their brother, the Pincoy, their male counterpart who has the body of a sea lion. It's pretty cool. Once aboard, the perished souls can resume their existence in an eternal reverie of adventure on the high seas. However, there is a much more sinister version of this legend, which states that the crew of the Caliuche instead sailed the Chilo archipelago, luring fishermen and sailors toward it with an enchanting music to enslave them as part of their crew for eternity, where they are twisted and then contorted and put to work in their afterlife. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I prefer the first one, actually. Number four, the Jenny. Way back in the era of exploration, when ships sailed across the sea, the South Pole was one of the most treacherous passes an explorer could make, and countless sailors sailed their last expedition around the Antarctic. One such ship is a small schooner called the Jenny. Now, we really don't know much about this ship, the purpose of its original mission, really even who was sailing on it. What we know of the Jenny comes from the post-mortem, when it was found, discovered by a whaling ship in the year 1860. The Hope was sailing through when it spotted a battered schooner beaten, but somehow still sailing around, passing narrowly through the gap between two icebergs. The crew of the Hope closed in. This was quite an odd sight. They recognized the English flag atop the mast and assumed the ship was in grave danger and needed immediate assistance, so they sailed on forward. They saw seven men standing on the deck, although they looked 
gravely underdressed for the weather conditions and not particularly active at all. These guys were sort of just uh, chilling out up there. It wasn't until the Hope sailed close enough that they realized the men they were looking at on the Jenny weren't just sluggish, but they were frozen remains. Frozen in place as if they'd been frozen flash, solid as if it happened in an instant. They appeared to be in mostly good condition. I know that sounds incredibly bizarre to say that about a corpse, but they weren't showing signs of decomposition or any physical injuries. The Hope's captain, Captain Brighton, boarded the Jenny to try and understand what was going on here. He went underneath the decks and found a man slumped over a barrel with a journal in his hands. Brighton went up to touch him but realized immediately like everyone else he had been frozen in place. So he pried the journal from his cold dead hands and read the last chilling entry. Chilling. I didn't even mean to say that. That was a little pun. That's what my comedy degree paid for. May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the last one alive. If the log was to be believed, then that would mean the crew had been sailing as corpses aimlessly for decades, as if not a day had passed. Captain Brighton took the journal home with him to return one day. And tragically, the wife of the Jenny's captain was found dead in the bedroom cabin alongside the ship's dog. The Hope sailed off with nothing more than the journal and left the Jenny floating across the frozen water where she may still be to this day, or perhaps she's plunged deep beneath the water. Wherever she is, I hope those men's found some peace and hopefully some food. Next up at number three, the fire ship of Baie de Chaleur. Which, I mean, come on guys, that's probably the most awesome sounding title to anything on this historical list, right? The fire ship of Baie de Chaleur sounds like something that Geralt of Rivia himself would sail down to Skellig after a summer in Toussaint, but whatever, that's by the by, because this vessel in question actually takes us over to the eternally autumnal eastern tones of New Brunswick, Canada. Now, the fire ship of Baie de Chaleur is also more commonly referred to as the Chaleur Phantom or the Phantom Ship, and it often takes the form of a series of ghost lights just before a storm, appearing as a large three-mast galley. Now, the actual mechanics of this phenomenon are dubiously debated, and many believe it's caused to be down to either the weather phenomenon of St. Elmo's fire, or an undersea release of natural gas after a patch of rotting vegetation just off the New Brunswick coast. I mean, that's a completely different story entirely, but what we're concerned with is the actual origin of the fire ship, the history of which is equal parts tragic and gruesome. As the legend goes, back in 1501, a Portuguese captain had spent a year pillaging the coast of Baie de Chaleur, capturing Micmore natives for the slave trade. However, his cutthroat agenda was miscalculated, as a year later, when he returned to the region on his second voyage, he was captured, tortured, and killed by the Micmac people in revenge for their kidnapped tribesmen. The legend didn't end there, though, because a year later, the brother of the Portuguese captain sailed to the bay in search of his missing sibling, and upon seeing the same flags, the Micmac people attacked the ship, setting it ablaze whilst it was moored in the bay. Cut off, burning, and with certain death facing them, the sailors swore to haunt the bay for a thousand years as their blazing fire ship sank into the Bay of Chaleur. Now, whilst later both Micmac and Portuguese casualties washed up on the shores of the island, the bay itself is said to be haunted by those that perished, often appearing as distraught sailors and warriors, their flesh burnt by the fire ship. Swinging in at number, number two, Lady Love a Bond. A ghostly story of lust, love, jealousy, and rage. The dark history of this haunted love boat. In 1748, the day before Valentine's Day, it was set to sail as a celebration of the ship's captain's wedding. On February 13th, 1748, the ship contained by the newly married Simon Peel was carrying his new wife, Anetta, and their wedding guests from London to Oporto, Portugal. Unknown to the captain, his first mate, Rivers, was also in love with Anetta, and in a fit of insane jealousy, seized the helm after murdering the helmsman and deliberately steered the ship towards the Goodwin Sands, where it ran aground, cracking the ship in half and unfortunately drowning everybody on board. And there, the story might have ended, had it not been witnessed for all the claims to have seen the ghostly ship appear every 50 years. Some of them even passing close enough to hear the sounds of celebration. Apparently on the 13th of February, the Edenbridge spots Lady Lovabond's ship exactly 50 years later. It was reported seen by ship captain James Westlake, and according to his testimony, he almost collided with the ship before he could finally turn the steering wheel to avoid the collision. Dude, close call just shows up out of nowhere? Like what? He also recorded in his logbook, the ship was headed straight for the Goodwin Sands. Other sightings have been reported at 50 year intervals, except for 1984, when the ship failed to materialize. 1798, 1848, 
1898 and 1948 witnessed the ship's sightseeings. Even some boats sent out rescuers, assuming that it was in distress or loss at sea. But later, it could never be found. Yo, a tale as old as time, huh? Jealousy, that'll do it. Yeah, always does. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the Duke of Danzig. And for our most terrifying ghost ship on this list, of course it has to be a brutal and bloodthirsty pirate ship, a privateer that plundered her way across the Caribbean, notoriously in the name of her royal namesake, the Duke of Danzig. This ship's seafaring career was relatively quiet for the first few years of service, mainly acting as more of a letter of mark, a deterrent more so than a private man of war. However, her fate quickly changed after changing command and sailing under the French captain, Francois Aregnadeau. Now, his intentions were to sail and plunder his way across the Seven Seas, and plunder he did from Liverpool to Barbados, capturing and scuttling more ships than he could count on his way. However, despite being a vessel of the French Empire, strangely enough, sometime after late June 1812, the Duke of Danzig just disappeared. Although, there are several records catching a glimpse of her around Canada but she was never seen again. After the last mention of her, it was thought that she'd been destroyed by a tropical cyclone or sunk in the night after an encounter with a British frigate. However, as the legend goes, that was not the last of the Duke of Danzig. After the golden age of piracy had been sated, a captain by the name of Napoleon Galois relayed his records of a French frigate encountering the wreck of the Duke of Danzig drifting listlessly at sea. As his crew witnessed, the ship itself was covered from helm to hull in dried blood, and in staggered rows were the putrefying corpses of her crew, many of which were brutally crucified to the masts or the deck. Strangely enough, there were no signs that she had been in in recent battle. In fact, despite the blood, she was pristine. No shot holes and her sails and rigging intact. After searching the ship, Galois's crew found a stack of blood-stained papers, identifying the captain as the same Francois Aregnadeau. And then, as they left, the crew of the frigate set the brig ablaze, forever to be buried at sea along with her mystery. Number five, the Octavius. The Octavius became more than just a legend in 1775 when a whaling ship named the Herald found it aimlessly drifting off the coast of Greenland. The scary part, with all of its crew frozen dead by the Arctic cold's mist and winds. Uh huh. To add to the spookiness, the ship's captain was even found sitting at his desk with a logbook in front of him, finishing a log entry from 1762. The Octavius was a legendary 18th century ghost ship. According to the story, the three masted schooner was found west of Greenland, boarded as a derelict. The five man boarding party found the entire crew of 28 below deck completely frozen solid, and almost perfectly preserved. The captain's body was supposedly slouched over the table in his cabin, pen in hand, with the captain's log in front of him. In his cabin, there were also the bodies of a woman and a boy covered with a blanket, and a sailor with a tinder box in his hand trying to stay warm. The boarding party took only the captain's log before leaving the vessel, trying not to touch the remains or evidence of what possibly could have been the reason for the lost ship at sea. The last entry from the logbook was November 11th, 1762, which meant that the ship had been lost in the Arctic for 13 years. Can you imagine? 13 years of just traveling the Arctic, sailing slowly while frozen bodies lay still on board as a ghost ship? Yo, that's just like terrifying, okay? Like seeing a ghost ship sail up beside you from the fog, crystallized in frozen ice with the horrors that lay below the deck? Very sad, very sad, but also very scary, you know? Swinging in at number four, the Eliza Battle. And for this one, we're pinching the parameters of the Seven Seas, and instead, we're taking a look at one of the most notorious maritime disasters that instead of on an ocean, occurred on a river. The Tom Bigby River, to be precise, a stretch of water that runs between Columbus, Mississippi, and Mobile, Alabama. And here we have the legend of the Phantom Steamboat of the Tom Bigby. Back in 1852, one of the largest river steamboats constructed at the time, the Eliza Battle, was put into service between the two southern states. During one particularly cold February in the winter of 1858, after the Eliza Battle had departed the city of Columbus, the ship made its way downriver, stopping on the way at Pickensville, Gainesville, Demopolis and several other small river landings. By the time that the steamboat had left off at Demopolis though, it was filled to the rafters with passengers. And not only passengers, but also over 1,200 bales of cotton to be ferried to the final stop. Now, although it roughly still remains a complete mystery, around 2 a.m. on March the 1st, 1858, about 30 miles downriver from Demopolis, the crew of the Eliza Battle awoke, startled to discover that the cotton bales on the main deck 
were on fire. Flames soared and quickly engulfed the ship's hull, soon spreading out of control despite the frigid temperatures attributed to the odd gussy evening. The boat continued onward though, the entirety of the exterior completely engulfed in flames and cut off from their lifeboats. The passengers, many of them who had awoken dressed in their night clothes, were forced to plunge into the icy river below. Now, some of them survived mainly by floating atop the remaining cotton bales, but all in all, over 33 people lost their lives, both crew and passengers included. The Eliza Battle quickly sank beneath the water, the wreckage of which still lingers at the bottom of the Tom Bigby River. It's said that on a particularly cold and windy night, the Eliza Battle will emerge from the icy fog engulfed in flames once again, a warning sign of an oncoming ill omen. Number 3. The Mary Celeste We've heard about her. One of the most famous real life ghost ships of course is the mystery of the Mary Celeste. And I say mystery because it's still a mystery. She was found drifting slowly through the waters of the Atlantic Ocean in 1872, sailing completely unharmed and untouched with all its sails still up, the crew's personal belongings intact and a cargo of more than 1,700 barrels of booze untouched. She set sail from New York City with more than 1,700 full barrels of alcohol destined for Italy for distribution. On board were 10 people, including Captain Briggs, his wife, and their daughter. Over the next two weeks, the ship encountered, well, something bizarre. Ten days later, the vessel was spotted by a British brig, De Gratia. The crew from that ship boarded the Mary Celeste and discovered it deserted. Yeah, no crew. Spooky. First thing I'm thinking is Bermuda Triangle. Always, always, always. Ghost ships, anything lost at sea, Bermuda Triangle, immediately. But apparently a British ship found the Mary Celeste on December 4th, 1872, near the Strait of Gibraltar. Sorry, right. so not, not the Bermuda Triangle then? No? no? All right. Yeah, it couldn't have been pirates either, because apparently they like to drink stuff. It was apparently late reaching Italy and this British ship went out looking for her confused where she had gotten lost. The strangeness comes with the boarding. Below deck, things looked completely normal. Absolutely no signs of attack or struggle. The only things missing were one lifeboat, and the captain's logbook, and most importantly, the entire crew. Theories of crew mutiny, weather phenomenons like giant water spouts, or even consumption of poisonous foods came into play. After passing Santa Maria Island, the Azores on November 25th, 1872, there were no more entries. Devoid of all crew, but strangely stocked to the nines with food and booze, and all the crew's personal belongings like jewelry and clothes. With no clear explanation, the Mary Celeste remains one of the most puzzling ghost ships around. They still have no idea what happened to those people. After the salvage hearings, Mary Celeste continued in service under new owners, but in 1885, her captain deliberately wrecked her off the coast of Haiti as part of an attempted insurance fraud. Swinging in at number two, the Flying Dutchman. Of course, this legendary vessel couldn't not make this list. The ghost ship that can tragically never make port, doomed to navigate the perilous ocean for eternity. In actual fact, though, the Flying Dutchman has had such an impact on nautical culture that it's easy to overlook the treacherous tale of its origin. It is thought that the legend of the Flying Dutchman first originated from the 17th century golden age of the Dutch East India Trade Company, a mega corporation that had a stranglehold monopoly on the Dutch spice trade that ran throughout the 16th and 1700s, where tale was told of a Dutch man of war that was lost just off the Cape of Good Hope. Purportedly, every soul on board perished after being ravaged by a violent tempest. The following few days, numerous other trading ships reported seeing a ghostly, ethereal vessel out in the foggy mist of the ocean, flying the exact same colours as the Dutch vessel. Since then, the Flying Dutchman has gathered notoriety as the worst omen you could ever hope for of a phantom ship that heralds the demise of an entire crew. With sight things continuing all the way into the 19th and 20th centuries. In fact, perhaps the most recognised sighting was by King George V himself during a three year voyage in 1881 just off the coast of Australia. He noted in his personal log that 13 people had seen the same glowing flying Dutchman in the early hours of the morning, and later in the day, the ordinary crewman who had spotted the vessel fell from the foremast and in his words, was smashed to atoms. It's a little bit worrying that one. Eh? And number one, the Flying Dutchman. In all maritime folklore, this ghost ship has left quite an impact like no other. It's the ghost ship. The oldest one in the book. Well, maybe not the oldest, but definitely the most prolific and well known. The Pirates of the Caribbean, the Dead Man's Chest is literally the story of this. The legend, Vanderdecken, the captain is on his way towards the East Indies with a confidence and determination. He tried to steer his ship through the horrid weather conditions of the Cape of the Good Hope, but failed 
miserably. Even after, of course, vowing to drift until his own demise, you see, he apparently signed a little deal with you know who. He swore that he would succeed through the perils of waves even if he had to sail until his judgment day. The devil apparently heard his oath and took him up on it and now the Dutchman is condemned to stay at sea forever. Legend says that since then, they have been cursed to sail the oceans for eternity. To this day, hundreds of fishermen and sailors from the deep sea have claimed to have even witnessed the Flying Dutchman, continuing its never-ending voyage across never-ending waters. The most famous sightings, I would say, is that of Prince George V of Wales. He was on a three-year voyage in 1880 with his older brother, Prince Albert of Wales, and their tutor. The prince's log records say the following for the pre-dawn hours of July 11, 1881, near Australia. Quote, 4 a.m., the Flying Dutchman crossed our bows. A strange red light as a phantom ship glow, which lights the masks, spars, and sails of a brig 200 yards distant. As she came up on the port bow, but on arriving, there was no vestige or nor any sign whatever of a material ship. Seen right away to the horizon, 13 persons altogether saw her. That's a prince writing, so yeah, that's a uh, pretty good uh, source material, I'd say. This is horrific. Imagine a ghost ship faded by red light pulling up towards your ship in the middle of the night, then just cruises on by. Yeah, that'd be the uh, end of me, for sure. Number five, the Mary Celeste. Our first entry on the list of ghost ships today is the story of the Mary Celeste, a ghost ship where the crew abandoned it for a reason no one knows. In 1872, the captain, one Benjamin Briggs, cast off out of New York's docks to travel to Italy. On board were the captain, his wife, their young daughter, and a small crew of eight seasoned sailors coming with them. The voyage seemed like a success until it was found by another ship, the Del Gradia. The crew of the Del Gradia approached the Celeste since it was barreling forward at full speed and full sail without anybody manning the crew. So the Del Gradia boarded it to investigate and found more questions than they had before as there was barely a sign of life. If they hadn't found it freely floating, they would have assumed the ship had just been built. There was a little bit of water in the hold and a lifeboat was missing, but other than that, the ship was fully intact, the hull undamaged, the hold replete with food and water and other supplies. So what happened? Why would the captain and the crew abandon a perfectly serviceable, well-stocked ship, especially one that was carrying his own family. Now there have been theories over the course of the years. Piracy is a fairly common suggestion, suggesting they were attacked, but if the ship had been raided, why did they leave all the food and water behind and leave the ship freely floating? It's not like a pirate to leave anything valuable behind, anything at all. The ship was still on course to their destination, and the logbook found on board stated that the Mary Celeste was on the right path, so, what happened there? They were going the right way. It's worth mentioning that before this strange occurrence, the Mary Celeste already had a checkered history. It was originally known as the Amazon before Jeff Bezos sued. No, it was the Amazon, but it was given a new name after a series of mishaps led crews to believe it was a cursed ship. The first captain died of an extreme sickness, and on one of the first voyages, the Amazon crashed into another ship. So it was renamed the Mary Celeste, hoping perhaps that a new name and a coat of paint could salvage its reputation, if only that was the case. The Celeste was recovered and sailed a few more years before being run down for insurance purposes, and to date, no one knows what ever became of Benjamin Briggs and his crew. And if you're looking for more ghost stories, not necessarily nautical, but ghost stories of any variety, Top 5 Scary has loads of that and then some. We've got just about everything freaky you can think of. So click on through and hit subscribe. Please make sure you hit that bell. But would you kindly do that at the end of this video? Because I got way more stories about haunted ships coming up for you right now. Let's get back into it. Coming in at number four, the Lady Loverbond. Of course, no list would be complete without a good old sea shanty of jilted lovers and ghostly revenge. As the legend goes, the Lady Loverbond was a schooner that is alleged to have been wrecked on the Goodwin Sands just off the southern coast of Kent on the 13th of February 1749. But if you ask any old sailor worth their salt, they'll tell you that it just so happens to have a habit of reappearing every 50 or so years as a ghost ship. As the story goes, the captain of the ship, a man named Simon 
Reed had just been married to his bride Anetta and was celebrating the joyous occasion with a cruise bound for Oporto in Portugal. Now it is high time to mention that a long standing sailors superstition was that back in the day it was grave bad luck to bring a woman on board and in many ways the legend of the Lady Lover Bond is a cautionary tale that exemplifies that fact. According to the tale the ships first mate a man named John Rivers was a rival for the hand of the captains young wife and in a jealous fit of rage he killed the crewman manning the ships wheel and steered the vessel into the treacherous Goodwin Sands killing absolutely everyone on board. And if you're asking me that is a stark overreaction. But nevertheless since that fateful day in 1749 the Lady Loverbond has been sighted on numerous occasions with an ethereal ghostly glow eternally bound to wander the ocean. Number 3 The Orang Medan That's a fun name. In the 1940s there was a widespread story about a ship named the SS Orang Medan that had exploded near Indonesia and its entire crew was found dead under mysterious circumstances. That's a pretty good ghost story. And like any good ghost story there's a number of variants depending on who's heard what. Some claim that the Medan was attacked by a boarding party of rabid pirates, modern day buccaneers. Others claim that it was smuggling dangerous secret chemicals that poisoned the crew and caused the ship to explode. And of course we're on top 5 scary, I love wild speculation so I'll say I think aliens did it and who are you to tell me I'm wrong. It could be something paranormal. Interestingly, despite this story being so widespread and repeated there doesn't actually appear to be many records of this ship. So did it really exist or was the whole thing just a ghost story altogether? It's believed that the ship was passing through the Strait of Malacca during the 1940s and one of its first references was that of a passing ship that was said to have picked up a radio signal coming from the Medan. Reading out the very creepy message of We float. All officers including the captain dead in the chart room and on the bridge. Probably whole of crew dead. I die. That's something out of a Stephen King book man. The vessel was an American ship called the Silver Star and it went out to investigate probably the scariest message you could ever get at sea. What they found they couldn't have prepared themselves for. The entire crew was dead with I quote teeth bared with their upturned faces to the sun staring as if in fear. The ship's dog had died too. But most bizarre was that none of these bodies showed any signs of a physical struggle. Some believe the ship had been carrying toxic materials and poisoned the crew and that seems possible but honestly given off of what I just read that sounds way more like it's supernatural. I think demons were involved. If you've ever seen the movie Event Horizon this seems a lot like it was an Event Horizon situation. In at number 2 we have the Gulf of Mexico's cursed shipwreck. An estimated 4,000 shipwrecks litter the seabed across the stretch of water and the Gulf of Mexico is one of the wealthiest locations for maritime archaeology in the world. In February 2001 oil workers for ExxonMobil were laying some pipeline when they happened to stumble upon a shipwreck about 2600 feet deep. After discovering the wreckage a team was assembled to explore this mysterious ship but nothing seemed to go right. The exploration submarine malfunctioned right as it was getting ready to go down to check out the wreck and that was only the beginning of these mysterious mysterious malfunctions. Others include video monitors going out whenever they fired their thrusters, sonars breaking and hydraulics going haywire with no explanation for any of these problems. After nothing working and things continuing to break the navy sent a researcher submarine down to investigate the wreckage and on the way down it suddenly self destructed and somehow when it finally did get to the wreck its arms were too short to reach anything. Six months later in July in 2002 a team working aboard the NR1 decided to launch a robotic sub down to the wreck Side, but the malfunctions continued. The second the rover entered the water it veered to the right and went out of control. The tether had caught in the propellers which caused the vessel to smash into the underside of the ship and the rover was never recovered. Later in the summer of 2002 the curse would continue as a ship from sustainable sea program of the NOAA offered to pick up artifacts from the site. The first time the vessel attempted to leave the dock debris was lodged in the propeller. The second time the propeller locked and the ship ended up in dry lock needing repairs. Over the years many others have tried to learn more about this wreck but little was found and what was found wasn't at all helpful. To this day nothing has been able to get too close to the shipwreck to investigate and explore the phenomenon and very little is known about this mysterious ship. Many believe the lives lost in the wreck continue to haunt the ship and will keep anyone and everything out of it at all costs. And number 1 The Carol Deering Now we've been talking about ghost ships this whole video and you know weird things that have happened to ships, ships going missing but we've yet to bring up my favourite anomalous triangle outside of Bermuda. So let's fix that eh? Let's talk about the ghost ship 
the Carol A. Deering. It was 1929 and the Deering was returning home from the Hamptons to Barbados, passing a Cape Lookout lightship. A man on the lightship called out to the Deering because he thought the crew looked aimless. They told him that the Carol Deering had lost its anchors, which I don't know if you know a lot about ships, that's a bad thing for a ship to lose. The Carol Deering kept making its way forward, I guess the lightship didn't have any anchors to lend out or anything, where it was spotted again a few days later by a ship called the SS Lake Elon, with its captain reporting that the behavior of the Carol Deering was very odd. He described it as steering a peculiar course. And that would be the last time anyone saw the crew of the Carol Deering alive. Two days later, the Carol Deering was discovered by the Coast Guard washed up on a nearby shore. The ship was missing its lifeboats and the decks were flooded. A rescue crew went in to investigate and were baffled by what they found. The ship had been picked clean. It was missing all its documents, all important equipment, belongings, it was stripped to the walls. The lifeboats and anchors were all gone and there wasn't a single sign of life in the ship with the exception of one oddity. A beautiful feast laid out for the entire crew that had been untouched not a nibble taken out of it. No one knows what became of the crew of the Deering. There's always been theories. Some people think maybe they mutinied against their captain and fled. Some people think they were taken by the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Was their ship stolen? Or maybe they all just went home. We might never know. Coming in at number five, we have the narwhal tusk. If any of you have ever seen the movie Elf, then you're familiar with the cute narwhal in the beginning of the movie. And that movie really brought narwhals to the public's attention and making this sea creature more popular than ever before. But so much about this creature is a mystery. In 1577, the English explorer Martin Frobisher led an expedition of 150 men to the northern Canada in search of gold, but they had come across something they had never intended, and that was the sea unicorn. The myth of the unicorn goes back centuries, and the business of unicorn horn trade was sustained through the Middle Ages and Renaissance by Vikings who killed the so called sea unicorns, cut off their horns, and sold them for an astronomical price. As European naturalists became more familiar with the world's animal, the myth of the unicorn faded, the mystery of the sea unicorn continued. Frobisher's discovery was actually what we know today as the narwhal, but the horn itself continues to be speculated by many. But the horn is apparently not a horn at all, but is a tooth. The relatives of narwhals include species like the beluga whales, orcas and dolphins, but the mystery remains of how did this massive freakish tooth evolve in this one specific species, after its ancestors branched off from whales with ordinary teeth. Many scientists and researchers debate about what this tooth is used for and some suggest it's an acoustic probe, a rudder, an ice picker or a spear for battling predators. These creatures don't make it easy for researchers to see them use their tusk for anything at all, so it makes many people continue to question it. Many have come up with many different theories about this so called horn and what they use it for and why they have it. It has created a huge debate between researchers and scientists to this day, but no definite answer has come out to this day. Next up at number 4. The Jenny. Now this one is a little bit murkier to say the least and historical accounts vary from person to person. One thing always remains the same though, if the accounts are true then this nautical tale is perhaps one of the most bleakest and most despairing cases of a crew being lost at sea. As the story goes, the Jenny, an English schooner that set sail from its home port of the Isle of Wight in 1822, became frozen in an ice barrier just off the Drake Passage sometime in its voyage in 1823. Nearly a decade later. Later in 1840, the stark remains of the ship had been dislodged by the ice, only to be discovered by a nearby whaling ship. As some accounts tell, when the crew first saw the ship, they saw seven figures standing to attention on the main deck, and so thought that the vessel was manned. As they got closer though, they discovered the grim truth. The seven figures standing to attention were in fact frozen in place, turned to ice by the Arctic cold. Things only got worse from there though, and as the crew of the whaling ship explored the vessel they found more and more bodies frozen in time deeper below the deck. As some reports go, as the crew came to the captain's cabin, they found him frozen in place with a pen in his hand. The final note written in his log read May 4th 1823, no food for 71 days, I am the only one left alive. Yeah, spooky stuff. Coming in at number 3 we have the Bermuda Triangle. Named for the triangular shape of around 500,000 square miles of ocean between Miami, Bermuda and Puerto Rico. 
For centuries, the Bermuda Triangle has been mystified as a harrowing patch of ocean where sailors and pilots are prone to lose contact with the natural world and disappear forever. Back when Christopher Columbus first sailed the area, he claimed to see a giant ball of light in the sky that crashed into the horizon and made it glow. Soon after, all sorts of strange events happened in the area, including several boats mysteriously disappearing, and in one instant in 1945, an entire squadron of US torpedo bombers vanished into thin air due to all these weird instances, giving this place the name the Devil's Triangle. The exact number of ships and airplanes that have disappeared is not known, but it's estimated that around 50 ships and 20 planes have been victim to the Bermuda Triangle, and many of these mysterious disappearances of these ships and planes have never been recovered. Many see the Bermuda Triangle as a real phenomenon and have multiple theories to try and explain this mysterious place. And some of these theories are human error, paranormal explanations, violent weather like hurricanes, the Gulf Stream, which is a major surface current within the ocean, methane hydrates, which is a form of natural gas that causes bubbles to form around the ship and ultimately sink it without warning. All of these are only theories and the Bermuda Triangle to this day is the most notorious sea legend of all time. Number 2. The Young Teaser So they called me in high school. Unlike a lot of other ships on this list that had served as merchant vessels, the Young Teaser, true to its name, was a bit of a wild card rebel as far as ships go and was a notorious pirate schooner flying the black flag and was famous for its speeds. The Young Teaser had made a name for itself as a dangerous ship around Mahone Bay. Notable for several successful raids, which is a lot easier said than done. I don't know if you've ever tried to board an enemy ship, it's very complicated. A whole lot wrong can happen on the ocean, and in the year of 1813, the teaser had met a match it couldn't outplay when it was cornered by a Nova Scotian officer by the name of Sir John Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke was a decorated military officer. He was a veteran of the War of 1812 and was looking to continue his path of glory, get another medal on the chest by capturing the teaser and its crew and bringing them back to the crown to face justice for years of plundering. Sherbrooke was ready to board the teaser, but he noticed that a privateer aboard it had already begun lighting their own ship on fire. Instead, the pirates had chosen to go up in flames rather than face the news back in England. Now, a pirate choosing death before capture isn't the most wild story. I'd wager a lot more pirates did that than Jack Sparrow would have you believe, but it's how the teaser's legacy carries on that gives it a spot on this list. Ask a Nova Scotian around the bay and they might tell you one of their most famous ghost stories. That on June 27th of every year, the otherwise peaceful Mahone Bay is overcome by fog, smoke, and the curdling screams of the damned crew whose souls are still trapped in the bay. They say on a real foggy night you can see the burning ship still sailing through. Some people even saying they see spectral sailors hanging off the riggings. Some boaters say that they see the ship charging towards them as if it was still marauding out and about, only when it's about to crash into another ship, it vanishes into thin air leaving behind a cloud of smoke and fog in its place as if it was never there. And finally, in at number one, we have the unmapped ocean floor. This is truly one of the biggest mysteries, and humans' curiosity about the Earth's floor is centuries old. Much remains to be learned about the ocean, especially exploring the mystery of the deep sea. From mapping and describing the physical, biological, geological, chemical and archaeological aspects of the ocean and understanding their dynamics. For centuries, scholars believed the deep sea to be a lifeless place until the late 19th century, we've discovered there is a diversity of life and creatures living down there. Many researchers and divers had tried to dive and take submarines down to explore more of this unknown place, but it's very hard due to the extremely cold temperatures, the darkness and the literally bone-shattering pressure that's more than 1,000 times that at sea level. In 2019, a retired naval officer, Victor Vescovo set a new record as one of the deepest dives to date, reaching almost 36,000 feet down in a submarine into the deepest place on Earth, the Marianas Trench. The ocean covers more than 70% of the planet's surface, driving weather, regulating temperature, and ultimately supporting all life's organisms. Throughout history, the ocean has been a vital source of sustenance, transport, commerce, growth, and inspiration. But to this day, more than 80% of the ocean remains unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored, and it's still 
still unknown how deep the ocean really is. Given the high degree of difficulty and cost in exploring our ocean using underwater vehicles, researchers have relied heavily on technologies such as sonar to generate maps of the seafloor. But currently less than 10% of the global ocean is mapped using modern sonar technology, and only about 35% of the United States have been mapped using modern methods. As we go deeper into the ocean floor it's too deep for this modern technology because it's too remote and dark for this type of visual mapping. So if you go swimming in the ocean it's very unknown of what is swimming and living below you. But scientists and researchers continue to develop technologies to unlock the many secrets of the ocean. The NOAA is working to increase our understanding of the ocean realm. Starting us off at number 5 we have Yellow Jack. We're going to set sail on a weird one to start us off. If you're a flag enthusiast you might see the ending of this one coming from a mile away. but. We'll get there in a minute. So the legend of Yellow Jack starts upon a spice and gold filled ship preparing to leave the Indies and head back home. The crew was accounted for, the cargo was secure, the captain was feeling mwah, nice. Then at the last second a mysterious figure asked if they had room for one more. Feeling pretty good about their haul they welcomed this extra pair of helping hands on board. Wrong move. Turns out this was a disreputable lad known as Yellow Jack with a reputation so abhorrent that the ship was forbidden to enter any port she called upon. For ages the crew sailed from port to port hoping that someone would let them dock, but it never happened. They were forced to endlessly cruise the seas running lower and lower on supplies. Patience too. Eventually the crew went mad and committed mutiny before they all murdered each other. Some say the ship is still sailing. The ghosts of these sea locked sailors manning the helm. Someday they may find a port that will take them and they will finally be able to rest. In the meantime, they will sail the seas, infecting other ships with the same madness that Yellow Jack caused. Now, this is a spooky, ghostly story in its own right, but it could also be a reference to a different ship killer at the time. Disease. The Yellow Jack is a flag flown by ships infected with plague, cholera, and other nasty, fast spreading diseases. So, Yellow Jack itself could be a metaphor for disease, and ports weren't letting them in because of quarantine procedures. Absolutely fascinating, and it would also make a killer movie a pirate quarantine body horror. Think The Thing meets Wreck meets Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh damn. In at number 4 we have the submarine disappearances in 1968. This is one giant mysterious situation which is the disappearance of 4 submarines from 4 different countries in 1968. The USS Scorpion, a Soviet submarine K129, a French submarine Minerve and the INS Dakar went inexplicably missing over just a 5 month period, and the last 2 disappearing only 4 days apart. The exact causes of these sinkings remain unknown and remain a mystery over 50 years later. The INS Dakar was scheduled to arrive in Israel on January 29th 1968. When it didn't return searchers went out to find it but after a while there was no sign of the missing submarine. So the search ended on February 4th and the 69 man crew was officially declared dead in 1981. The cause of the sinking was never determined and theories say that either a mechanical or human error caused a catastrophic accident or that the submarine snorkel was damaged after hitting another ship causing it to flood. The Minerve was on the training operation in the Mediterranean on January 27th 1968 and when they were on their way home the men were caught in a bad storm. When it was 30 miles away from the port the Minerve made contact with the men on land and said it would port in about an hour, but an hour came and went and the submarine had never returned. A frantic search was conducted with 20 vessels and aircrafts trying to locate the Minerve, but it was eventually called off on February 2nd when they found nothing. The K129 with a crew of 98 descended on March 8th 1968 and almost 2 weeks into patrol on the North Pacific, the K129 129 failed to send a scheduled radio message. The Soviets soon began a frantic search and after 2 months of no sign of the submarine, they gave up their search. The cause of the ship sinking remains unknown and will likely never be known. Almost 3 months after the K129, the USS Scorpion, a nuclear powered attack submarine with a crew of 99 men went missing in the Atlantic while on its way back from a patrol in the Mediterranean. It was sent out on February 15th, 1968 and toward the end of its patrol, it 
radio that it was expected to return on May 27th, but as you can guess, the USS Scorpion would never return. Like the others, many searched for the lost ship, but on June 5th, the Scorpion and its crew were declared presumed lost. Over the years, there have been multiple searches for these submarines, but only parts have been recovered, and it's considered one of the biggest mysteries that happened in the sea. No one knows why so many went missing in such a short amount of time, how exactly they went missing for so long, and what exactly made these vessels disappear. And this is a mystery we may never get the answer to. Coming in at number three, we've got the ghost ship of the Northumberland Strait. Yes, Canadian Ghost Pirates. That pretty much sums up my career aspirations right there. I don't know if that means I would be pirating software related to ghosts or actually becoming a phantom upon the Northumberland Strait, but I don't really care as long as my title involves the words Canadian, Ghost, and Pirate. But back to the actual tale at hand. This ghost ship is said to sail when it's on fire within the Northumberland Strait. What is the Northumberland Strait? It is a body of water that separates Prince Edward Island from Nova Scotia and New Brunswick in eastern Canada. Now you all know some Canadian geography. I'm so proud of you. The story dates back over 200 years when people started reporting a beautiful schooner catching fire and being engulfed in flames as people watched from shore. Anyone who has ever attempted a rescue mission finds that the ship completely disappears before they can reach it. Apparently the ship shows up before a northeast wind, forewarning terrible storms. Some say it's just an example of St. Elmo's fire, a rare weather condition involving the ionization of air molecules in order to produce a faint glow, but those who have seen the ship ablaze say that it was much too bright to be explained away like that. The prevailing story is that a pirate made a pact with the devil to protect and hide his treasure, and in return, he and his crew would sail forever on the burning ship. A pact was made as the ship was burning down and would soon sink along with the treasure. In the end, folks claim that their fate was revenge for the terrible deeds they had done in their days of piracy, like their own personal floating hell. Next up, at number two, the Copenhagen. And it's quite the title really, because the Copenhagen is considered by most to be one of the greatest maritime mysteries of the modern era, with only whispers, rumours and speculation as to its ultimate fate. Built for the Danish East Asiatic Trading Company in 1921, it was the world's largest sailing ship at the time. And primarily served as a sail training vessel for young cadets. In the eyes of many, it was the most impressive sailing ship ever built. However, as the story goes, on September 21st, 1928, the Copenhagen departed from northern Jutland for Buenos Aires on its 10th and ultimately final voyage. A total of 75 people were aboard and the journey was planned to span all the way to Melbourne, Australia and then back to Europe. But tragically, as we know, it was never seen again. The thing was though, the captain of the ship, Hans Andersen, was renowned for going long periods at sea without sending any messages. And so it wasn't until nearly six months later that the Danish company sent a search party. No wreckage or remains have ever been found. However, following the next several years of the Copenhagen's disappearance, there were a number of highly reputable sightings of a five-masted ship that fit perfectly its description. In July of 1930, the crew of an Argentine freighter sighted what they referred to as a phantom ship during a gale. Their captain noted in his records that this may be the wrath of the Copenhagen. Dozens of stories and tales have perpetuated around the ultimate fate of the Copenhagen, but the truth is we may never know. In all likelihood though, it's still out there, somewhere, floating on the endless tide. And finally at number one, we have the Flying Dutchman. We saved the most well known for last. The legendary ghost ship is said to glow with ghostly light as it sails the seven seas. It will attempt to send messages to land or to people long dead if hailed. Unfortunately, nobody really wants to hail this ship, as the sight of it is seen to be a portent of doom. Like most ghostly ships, the Dutchman can never make port and is doomed to sail the oceans forever. It's theorized that the spectral seafarer had been rounding the treacherous Cape of Good Hope when it encountered a sudden storm. The hatches were battened down and the captain swore he would push right through come hell or high water. And it turns out a little bit of both were on the menu. For his recklessness with his ship and crew, the captain was divinely punished. 
he was condemned to sail the seas for eternity, serving as a warning to other mariners of bad weather and the cost of hubris. Sightings of the Dutchman have been reported since the 18th century, with many notable scallywags and scurvy dogs laying eyes on the ghastly vessel. Even Prince George of Wales described seeing a ship glowing with a strange light. If you see a ship with skeletons dancing in the rigging, steer clear. It might look like fun, but the captain will try to lure other vessels onto the rocks to ensure nobody else can pass the cape. Sheesh. Remind me not to take a long sailing trip.